Hey everyone, it's Wednesday, August 7th, and you know what that means. It's time for some more of our Quest 52 book. Today we're asked to read over a few verses and really think about them. So I've read through them, and I had some thoughts I just wanted to share with you. One of the things that I really love about the parables, and especially the parable of the prodigal son, is that there's so much that we can unpack from it. We talked a lot about the perspective of the prodigal son, and a little bit about his brother, and I wanted to dig a little deeper into the other people in the story. Um, you know, a lot of times we find ourselves thinking in life, at least I'm not as bad as that. It makes us feel better about ourselves, um, but it's usually at the expense of others. Things like, at least I grew up in church, at least I've never supported those people, at least I don't use whatever substance, fill in the blank. We other people because it helps us feel better about our own holiness. If you're like me and you grew up singing hymns, there's that old hymn that goes, prone to wander, Lord, I feel it, prone to leave the God I love. And as Adam talked about on Sunday, when we aren't walking with God, we're walking in opposition to him. We find ourselves in the distant land. It's in our sinful nature to walk away. And every day we become the prodigal son once again. We became the same as the people we othered. So while we see ourselves sometimes in the feet of the brother, we're always still on the feet of the prodigal son. Acts chapter 3 verse 19 says, Repent therefore and turn back that your sins may be blotted out. So even when we find ourselves shifting positions from the other brother back to the prodigal son or going whichever direction, God always calls us to turn around and come back to him. And one of the wonderful things about the story is when we see the prodigal son coming back, the father is not just standing at the gate and waiting for him to come back, the father sees him and runs out to him. He's not passively waiting, he's actively accepting our return. In 1 Peter verse, chapter 2, verse 25, he says, For you were straying like sheep, but now have returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. He said, all at once, we are the prodigal son and we are the brother. But one of the things that I think we forget when we read this story is we're called to be the third person in the story. That is the father. How is it that you react whenever someone wanders away, but then they come back? I know it's in my nature to say, oh, we've done those things. Why, sh why should we let you come back? But God is always there, always waiting for us to come back, always waiting with open arms. So should we go back to othering them and putting them aside and saying they're not one of us? Or should we be in the position of welcome back? It doesn't matter what you did while you were away. I'm just so thankful that you're here. In 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 9-10, through 10, it says, As it is, I rejoice, not because you were grieved, but because you were grieved into repenting. For you felt a godly grief, so that you suffered no loss through us. For godly grief produces a repentance that leads to salvation without regret, whereas worldly grief produces death. If every day we walk away and we're able to be welcomed back by God, how much more then should we be welcoming to the people that come back? Think about the people in your life that are just waiting to be welcomed back, that have wandered away, they've gone to the distant land, but they've realized it's not everything that they thought it was going to be. And they're just waiting for someone to welcome them back. How great would it be if you could be that person in their life? Let's pray. God, I'm so thankful that no matter where I wander in life, you are always right there waiting to welcome me back. I'm so thankful that your love overcomes everything that I have ever done in my life. I pray that you give me the strength and the guidance to do the same for others that you have done for me in everything that I do. It's in your name we pray. Thank you guys. And remember, this is a church that doesn't dismiss. You're sent to continue the mission until we meet again.